PBR as a method for bone augmentation is described already many, many years ago, 20, 30 years perhaps. And uh, this is as a basic concept and it is used with all augmentations as well. So we have to uh, take out the compression from tissues and we have maintained space and also to have some cells, bone cells, that we could grow and uh, get a nutrition for our bone graft that we place inside there. So with the compression technique, we just move this, uh, like to say, the bone augmentation just one small step forward. So it means that we use implant and we use not the cover screw, but two millimeter healing abutment and just move the compression from implant neck to the healing abutment. Because when we use only uh, cover screw, so usually the tissues compress that area and despite around implant, the bone augmented as well, but on the crystal area, we still not see enough bone. Other advantages, of course, uh, to use in lower jaw specifically, uh, not the hydroxyapatite, but uh, allogenic bone material. And when we mix it uh, with 50 to 50% 50 uh, with autogenous chips, so we get uh, really amazing results. And of course, if sometimes uh, thin soft tissues are present, we have to think about soft tissue augmentation. So that's why our idea was also to test if, uh, for example, mucoderm material, which is just developed for soft tissue thickening, could be used as a barrier memory. And uh, next year, we are hoping to publish uh, our uh, recent study. We calculate now statistics, uh, how mucoderm behaves as a membrane, as a collagen membrane during a GBR. But uh, all these cases, what we had until now, we are really very promising. Just in my 17 years of experience, I am not very happy of uh, bone quality, what I get uh, mixing uh, autogenous chips together with xenograft. I see much better results with uh, allogenic material. And allogenic material, if I want to achieve a better quality bone regeneration, so allogenic material is the first choice. And especially it works in lower jaw, because lower jaw uh, tends to be less vascularized and uh, it's worse nutrition for bone graft, so that's why we need to think a little bit more about quality. And in comparison with aesthetic area, for example, in upper jaw, upper jaw it's much better vascularized, and then the bone healing it's also it's much better. And also we need more contour after augmentation. And uh, usually it's enough bone for, to place implant for a function. So we, by having more compression in aesthetic area from tissues. So perhaps hydroxyapatite suits better for long-term aesthetic and, and functional results. So this is, would be uh, my experience for today.